So let me tell you guys a story about this song, okay? Uh, you guys kind of heard a little bit of earlier. It's uh, Daddy Yankee, all right? This was not recorded last year. This was recorded about 20 years ago. And so um, when, when, when I got my studio finally built for immersive mixing, I started reaching out to a bunch of clients, labels, record companies. I started reaching out to artists and saying, hey, I can do your Dolby mixes. Hire me, right? And they responded like, who are you? Why are you bothering me? Leave me alone, you know? And because they didn't know what Dolby Atmos was at the time. And so it took like a whole training of like, this is binaural, this is stereo, this is what music sounds like to Dolby Atmos. And finally, uh, this, this publisher gave me an opportunity. They own the rights for uh, Daddy Yankee's uh, first debut album, which is Barrio Fino. And uh, they sent me five of the songs to remaster in Dolby Atmos. Exciting. However, not all the files were there. <laughs> <laughs> You're talking about a 20-year-old project. Some hard drive found in some dude's garage or wherever it was, right? Fortunately, one of the songs was almost complete. I say almost complete because it was a track mixing, a, a track missing. But let me go ahead and play a little bit of the mix for you, okay? Here we go. All right, cool, so I'll stop it right there. Maybe you've heard this song, maybe it triggers back memories, right? And so um, let me talk about some of the challenges. Well, for one thing, this track right here was missing. And with triplets and stuff. So basically, the percussion track was missing. And I had to figure out a way, okay, what do I do? Their files don't exist anymore, right? So fortunately, because of my music production background, I was able to recreate the percussion pattern, the shaker pattern, by just programming it, right? Taking a shaker sample, lo-fi, because this is like 2001, and like lining it up. So I had to constantly go back to the reference mix from 20 years ago and listen to the, the percussion pattern and actually program it in on the computer so that it can match, right? So that was unique, right? Now, the other challenge is that a lot of these tracks were mixed who knows, they were either mixed on a Mackie console or SSL or in Pro Tools. I have no idea. All I know is that I need to make these tracks sound like the master reference from 2001. And what I had to do was basically do a type of mastering, okay? So right now all these plugins are grayed out uh, because I'm using this plugin right here called Heat. Are you guys familiar with Heat? Okay, so Heat is a... Uh, uh, Built in, with, in the Pro Tools mixer, and what it does, it gives you analog saturation in the box. So by adjusting the heat parameters, I was able to implement a little bit of analog saturation as you would get from a traditional mixing console like an SSL. Okay, so that was the first thing, because I needed the mix to sound as dense as the original Stereo Master. And that's, the way, that's one of the ways that I did that. In fact, that was a big part of it. The other part was basically using plugins now that, that do exist, that didn't exist uh, 20 years ago. Let me go ahead and pull up one of these stems. So here's a uh, vocal ad lib track. And I was able to use plugins to kind of make it more dense. And this is a plugin that, piece of hardware and plugin that didn't exist 20 years ago. This is my plugin alliance. And what it does is the saturator that like basically brings all the low level information of the volume up and it kind of makes the track dense. And it was really important that the mix sounded almost identical to the stereo mix. And so having these modern tools allow me to do that. Additionally, you're gonna see EQ on every track, and that's basically a general type of mastering curve that I had to apply to the mix, okay? So that's kind of like the background and some of the challenges of creating immersive mixes. Now, let's get into some more fun stuff, okay? Because there's a lot of stuff in this track. There's horns, there's uh, pianos. In fact, let's go ahead and mute all the um, purple tracks, which are the vocal tracks, and let's go ahead and hear a little bit of the arrangement with just the music. Here we go.
All right, cool. So the horns right here, there's a couple of things that you can do with the horns uh, in immersive that you can't do in stereo. In stereo, you can only pan things left and right, okay? If you want it to sound wide, you pan it to the left speaker and to the right speaker or in the center and it's gonna come out of both. But in immersive, what you're able to do is send it to different locations. So for example, these horns are going to the front, but then they're also going to uh, where these, uh, you guys are gonna see some objects appear here, like where the horns are actually being placed. So let me go ahead and play it uh, before and after. So this is gonna be basically uh, with just the horns coming from like in front of the listener. Okay, cool. And then I'm gonna also add those horns to be on the wide channels, which would be speakers reflect represented like in front of the left and right speakers. So it sounds a little bit more full, there's a little bit more body, and that's just by taking the same sound and placing it somewhere else in this 3D environment. Then additionally, you put them into the height speakers, which is gonna be reflected on the top part of the uh, 3D environment, and now it's coming to you in different directions. Watch. I did the same thing with some of these other tracks. Let's check them out. So that's like a synthesized baritone, right? Uh, using it to the same place where it's going to the white channels and it's going to the side aux. This is like a fake guitar. Now what's funny about this is that a lot of these sounds like sound like a cork triton from the early 2000s, you know? <laughs> because that's what that's the workstation that was like hip at the time, right? All the Britney Spears and you know Backstreet Boys and Sync, like all that music was created with these synths, right? And with this workstation, and that's exactly how this sounds. All right, cool. So that just gives you a, a, a quick, simple idea of how you can take individual sounds and actually spread them in the room. So let's talk about what we did with the actual vocals. So let me go ahead and play all these vocal tracks. I'm going to solo them. Uh, some of them are ad libs, some of them are lead vocals, and uh, some of them are doubles. Let's check them out. Here we go. Now, if you guys hear that and uh, pay attention to these green objects, like they all light up uh, brighter. So what happens is that I'm able to do a call and response, and that is super cool. The call and response is in the arrangement, but now I can do that in the mix. That means part A, call, is panned in front of you. Part B, response, is panned behind you, right? Let's hear it again. So right there where he starts a harmony, caer, it's panned to the sides, and then ella me levantó in the back. Tu me dejaste caer on the sides, and then ella me levantó, right? So you get this like three-tier dimensional, 3D dimensional space, it's awesome. Okay, now, additionally, what you can do in immersive is basically take a sound, whether it's stereo or mono, and begin to spin it around the room. And there's a number of ways to do that, okay? And I typically like to do that with like sound effects, so let me go ahead and dig around this session and see what I wanna uh, use for this example. Cool, we'll use the sound, okay? So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to uh, assign this to the bed, and that's basically gonna assign it to uh, just this general area here where this uh, cube is, okay? And then I'm gonna use a plugin called Energy Panner. Now, Energy Panner does a couple of things, but what it does, it like gives you like this automatic panning effect where you can take a sound and basically swirl it around the listener. So the listener is in the center of the room, in the center of the sphere, and by this, using this plugin, it's able to automate that sound to go around you. 
Now, super important for, to get this to work is you have to change the output to be, let's go to 704. There we go. And then I can choose my starting position and my ending position. So when I play this sound back, you guys are gonna basically see this sphere move around and it's gonna basically circle around your head. Let's check it out. So let me play that in context with like the piano or some of the other instruments, okay? Well, like the pads and the piano, that way you guys can actually hear what it sounds like in context. Here we go. Isn't that cool? <laughs> and and it's, it's not that it's just going left and right, but like as it gets further from the listener, it, it has different like room tonality, room qualities to it. And that's all due because of this binaural settings right here. So as a mix engineer, now you have the option to decide, okay, when something pans towards, towards the front, how distant do I want it to be? Well, right here, I can set it to off so that it's got no binaural, no binaural effect. I can set it to near, I can set it to mid, or I can set it too far. So what I'm able to do is play around with these parameters, and so as that one sound is spinning around the listener's head, it can get further and further away. And that's not by using reverb or delay, that's just by using the spatial audio engine built into Dolby Atmos, okay? So that's, that's a really cool technique, all right? Yeah. 